Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I have a very special guest. Hi, oh god! <laughs> my damaging my microphone. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I have a very special guest Hi. for you today. Um, this is Atusa. Um, I'm sure you will have seen her YouTube videos, extraordinaire that she is. I, I look like her. I, I, I'm around. <laughs> I think really one of the bigger players on the medic YouTube space, that's fair. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> She's being I guess, modest. I guess. But she has very kindly agreed to show me around London this morning. So we're, what floor are we on right now? We are on the ninth floor of the Guy's Hospital Cancer Centre in a little meeting room. And in case anyone is just wondering. the view out of here looking out over London is very very nice we are being mean we're not showing you maybe you can insert a clip yeah yeah I can put a, a right now <laughs> um, basically uh, we decided we were going to film on each other's channels today mm -hmm. and I thought it would be fun just to sit down and do an interview with someone because you very excitingly have gotten into grad med this have. year, haven't you? In September, I'm starting. Amazing. Could you believe it? Where are you going? I am going to Birmingham. So oh. it's going to be... A really, a stone's throw from Coventry. <laughs> well, I know, this is the thing. We'll probably definitely be making like other videos yeah. in the future. If you have some recommendations, then yeah. We'll we're, we're very close, aren't we? It's like an hour or something. Yeah, if that. If that. Okay, I think it probably makes sense just to start. Could you give us a bit of a background on yourself, your journey to medicine? Yeah, sure. So, um, as Ollie said, I've just been accepted to go and study graduate entry medicine at Birmingham, which just blows my mind. Um, but basically, I have been trying to get into medicine for the last two years, and I've um, approached medicine from my research background and I study environmental sciences as a lot of people in medicine do and they end up being grads. The classic? The classic, but the difference is that my story I think is a little bit different because I always intended to do research. I had considered medicine when I was younger but I went into biomed wanting to do research. I went and did a masters at King's in research and my plan was always to go and do a PhD. But then during my masters, which was a translational cancer medicine course, I had the privilege of working with lots of doctors and clinicians and I fell in love with it and so my journey began and I guess two years later here we are and yeah so I guess it's more about the beginning of my journey rather than the end but yeah so that's the area that I've approached medicine from. So when, when did you apply then? To medical school? Um, you mean in this round of applications? For, uh, how many times so far? Like... Um, so I applied twice but the first time I applied was at the end of my masters so for example I did my masters from September until August and then that October I applied but I had made and I've, I have made a video about this like explaining some of the mistakes and stuff that I made but I essentially forgot to do the reference part of the application properly Ah, don't make that Oof. mistake. Yeah, so I essentially got put back a year yeah. and universities rejected me immediately saying, we're so sorry, like we don't accept any late documents. Yeah. If you haven't um, given us your reference on time, then that's it, sorry, like I rang them all up. Yeah. Um, so that put me back a year and then I reapplied the following year and that's when I got my interview and then um, my offer a couple of weeks ago, so. Yeah. How did you feel when the offer came through? Honestly, I was, I was in this building, I was sat at my desk, and I saw it, and I picked up my phone, and I looked at my phone, and you know when people are in a state of shock, they just walk. I just walked. I walked, and by the time I stopped walking, I realized I was like halfway down the stairs, down the fire exit, and I was like, I'm gonna call my dad. So I just rang my dad, and I was like, Dad! <laughs> and it was like on my dad's birthday. Hey. So he was like, he was like, oh, this is such a good birthday present. And yeah i think i was just in a bit of a i was like is this is this right Did this, yeah. is this email correct have i read this right so disbelief even now it's been a good couple of weeks and i'm still like me did i want me like what like is it me <laughs> so yeah yeah it's it's crazy but i mean that it's it's a weird kind of that moment of shock isn't it like yeah. anti-euphoria no it's it it is crazy because there was a part of me as well because I don't know if any of you guys might can relate to this when you are working so, towards something for like a really long time and then it can't, comes into fruition or like you know 
that 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 chapter ends you feel almost a little bit empty so i was like so happy but then i was like oh my god like what next yeah. i'm going i'm actually going to have to think about getting ready and moving and stuff which is really exciting but also a bit like <laughs> can you then tell me a bit more about what you're doing during your masters why why did you decide to do the masters in the first instance um so after I'd done biomedical sciences, I found myself in a bit a state of a what do I do with my life yeah. kind of thing because while biomed is amazing, you can do so many jobs with it, the fact that you can do so many things with it stressed me out because there were too many options. Mm. So I took a year out and I didn't do anything with science or academia. And my master's was a gateway to get me back into research, to get me back into the field. And I always wanted to move down to London and I thought, you know what, if I don't do it now, I never will. Um, so that's how I ended up uh, doing my masters. And then from there, it was it was cancer research. And it was just a series of events that like, kind of uh, one followed the other. But in terms of the masters itself, it was cancer research. So what, what specifically have you been working on? Uh, do you mean in terms of like the projects? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So I did two projects, both were in breast cancer. So my first one was looking at triple negative breast cancer and having a look at extracellular vesicles and the effect that these have on the body's immune system and how well the body itself can fight off cancer. So for the boys and girls at home, what is triple negative breast cancer? <laughs> triple negative breast cancer is a subtype of breast cancer and without going into like the molecular side of things, it is essentially one of the most aggressive types and the prognosis is quite poor and it tends to affect younger women. So, which is why it's extra important for us to do research to try and figure out ways of treating it or identifying it early, etc. Um, the second project was also in breast cancer. And again, to, to cut a very long story short, it was having a look at the interactions between a certain protein on cancer cells and the receptors on immune cells. And again, having a look, because immunotherapy for anybody who's like in the research if you've got an interest if you read about it like immunotherapy is like a really big thing and a lot of my projects were involved in looking at how your body reacts to cancer okay. basically obviously this is being done as part of a youtube project yes um how why how did all that happen um how, okay so I guess starting off with youtube yeah fluke Honestly, I mean, if you guys see my older videos, they're just that they're art videos. They're a bit random. Um, I started off YouTube as kind of like a fun thing where I was like, I want to talk about art and I want to vlog and do all of that. But then the more I got into my masters and the more I got into my studying, the more I realized, do you know what? I can actually make something that might be more, I don't know, like academic and useful. Yeah. And um, I mean, Ollie and I had just filmed the video on my channel and we were briefly talking about this, that there's a sense of the more challenges I started to come across during my own journey, the more I realized, oh my God, if somebody like taught me what I have just learned through going, this, going through this challenge, if somebody had said this to me before, it would have made my life so much easier. Yeah. So it was a case of, I was like, you know what, I'm going to take the responsibility and try and share because my overall goal, I guess, is to help as many people, uh, well, help students to get through, get to where they want to be in terms of their studies, but also, you know, fighting cancer, man, and disease and whatnot. So that the more people, good. well, yeah, <laughs> sound like some sort of like fallen superhero, but yeah. So I just thought if I can help anybody deal with the challenges that I struggled with, then might as well put it on the internet and see what happens. Fantastic. Yeah. So obviously September, we're now 2019, wow. Um, so September 2019, we'll be seeing you at Birmingham Medical School. I guess so, yes. Um, how are you feeling? What are, you, are you excited? Are you nervous? How is oh, it? Oh gosh, absolutely. I'm, I'm so excited because it's a new journey. I'm sure you know you must have felt the same way. I'm nervous. Again, I think that's expected. Um, that never goes away. No. <laughs> It does, I mean, the thing is, what I've been trying to do, and I guess I recommend this to any of you guys who've gotten a place, is trying to speak as many, to try and to speak to as many people as possible and get their experience. 
it's important to bear in mind, I think, that everybody has a different experience. Yeah. Um, so just because somebody says something that might scare you or get you too excited, just I think I've been trying to keep myself composed throughout the waves of oscillating anxiety and excitement. So, yeah. Fair enough. I mean, it, is, there, is there anything you're looking forward to? I'm really looking forward to just starting afresh, I think, I'm in terms of going back to studying because I just, I like learning, I enjoy learning and I enjoy practical learning as well. So I'm really looking forward to starting the, jour to the journey of becoming a doctor mm -hmm. um, because I know lots of people want to be doctors, but I'm excited to go through that journey and just starting it, I guess. So on that note then, what, what skills or, or attributes or whatever have you acquired maybe through your undergraduate degree and your mm. masters that you think may help you when it comes to medicine? Or maybe a hindrance, right. I don't know how you feel. No, okay, that's a good question. I think one of the biggest things I've learned is to try and stay calm through stressful situations. My masters, like there were times where it like nearly broke me because you've got deadlines, experiments aren't working, you know, you're not, you've, you know, you just have so many challenges. And I learned that, you know what, no matter how bad things are, you just have to get through them sometimes. And so I guess resilience is something that I've built up. I'm sure I have a lot more to learn. Um, that's one of the most important things. The hindrance, and I will tell you this, the thing with the research mm -hmm. is that it's beautifully flexible. <laughs> so especially in the labs that I've been privileged to work at, you it's essentially like, this is a project, please produce results, you're very welcome to do it roughly in your own time, which does normally mean I end up working more. Yeah. But that flexibility, you don't really get with medicine. And I know you were telling me that when you started your grad med, it was like li lectures literally like nine to six, you just have to show up and you have to do that. And I think, having the privilege of flexibility now might be difficult to adjust back to a very strict routine. Obviously a bit personal, but on this channel I like to encourage people <laughs> if I can, uh, without being rude, to talk about these things. So mm -hmm. when you applied your first time mm -hmm. and you were unsuccessful, mm -hmm. how did that feel at that time? <laughs> it's okay. This is a bit of a funny question to answer because because my application wasn't um, it didn't officially get considered yeah. because of the blunder that I made. I felt really dumb basically because it's not it's not like you receive constructive criticism and you think okay well I could have improved my UK CAT or I could have got my better work experience. It was just. Just like, really, it was like just putting my head in my like hand for about, for about like three months, like literally, that's how it felt. Um, but I think, and I've spoken about this before, it was just a case of taking responsibility and instead of thinking, oh, well, the system didn't make it clear enough yeah. and like, oh, some, nobody was there to tell me and da 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 da. I just thought, you know what, you did something stupid, but it's okay. Forgive yourself, you make mistakes, yeah. improve next time and see how it goes. I mean, I think that's very, like, what more can anyone ask for at that point? You owned any errors or mistakes that were made and... Yeah. But, but um, now, you, now you're in. Yes, yeah, and yeah. you know what, I don't, I don't regret the extra year because it's not like I've just been sitting and waiting. I've yeah. been doing stuff, working, and I have enjoyed it. Um, but as I said, just silly is how I felt. Like, that's yeah. just silly. Mm. I've been looking down at my phone because I've got all my questions written down <laughs> yeah. and there is, there is actually one on here, there is one not on here, the opposite of that. We were talking a lot about books, yes. so before we film this video, um, we've just done one um, for Atusa's channel which will now be playing here somewhere, <laughs> make sure you go and watch that. Um, but we were talking a lot about books mm. and how how much kind of collective wisdom that there is oh in, my God, yes. in literature. Yes. So, we're gonna hash this out. Oh. <laughs> recommend, mm -hmm. maybe not even to people who oh, wanna go to medical school, but I right. want your top three books that you think everyone should read. Okay, fine. So, this is a book I've read recently, and it's kind of, uh, 
It's uh, Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. That is definitely got to be um, on like on the top of my list. And it's essentially, how would you describe it? So it's, it's, it's kind of like a story of a psychologist's journey through the Holocaust, but also how he learned to give his own life meaning throughout his struggles and suffering. And obviously, you don't have to have experienced the Holocaust to have experienced some sort of suffering or um, difficulty through your, throughout your life. And he just talks about how it's those things that make give your life meaning. Yeah. And especially in a generation like ours, where a lot of people do struggle with these questions, we don't talk about it as much as we should. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people are looking for purpose. Definitely recommend that book. Um, that's so that's one of them. Okay, this one's a bit of a curveball. Um, I'm trying to remember if I can, I'm saying it right. So, are you familiar with Tim Ferriss? Yeah. It's not okay. The Four Hour Work Week. Yes, guy. but not that book. Right. Um, it was. Oh, which one is the one where he gives loads of advice? It's like a black and yellow book. How have I forgotten this? I will quickly Google this yeah. while you're trying Pause. to. <laughs> that one. Tribe of, Tribe of Mentors. Mentors. Okay, right. Okay, we've got it. One so quick Google. One later. quick Google. Um, it's Tim Ferriss Tribe of Mentors and. This, I think, I haven't read all of it, but it's a kind of book you can dip in and out of. So if you don't, it's a really big book. And essentially he has interviewed hundreds of people and asked them a set, like some set questions yeah. about uh, just about life, about silly, silly things. Um, and I think it's an amazing book because throughout life, everybody needs mentors and you can try and seek those mentors out in real life but sometimes you might not have access to you might be introverted you might be living in an area where you don't have access to those mentors and that's why i love the book it's concentrated wisdom from lots of different people including celebrities and famous people um, and you can essentially dip in and out of it so cool. definitely recommend that's that too. okay got it got it um mastery by robert green i am such a robert green fangirl I don't know why, I like his style, I like that he's a little bit cynical, mm. but he's realistic and this book just talks about mastery and becoming a master in your own field and figuring out what you want to do and I love that book and it's a book that I gift to people a lot and recommend to people all the time, so there you go, those are my three. Perfect, three excellent books, there'll be links to all of those in the video description as well, I'll just put the Amazon links, but other retailers are available. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> right, yes, your master's was in cancer research. Yes. Do you think that your master's being in cancer research and not another mode of research will affect your choice of medical specialty? Yes. So I am still a firm believer that it's naive to pick a specialty before you've even been into med school. And I always do give this disclaimer. But I think because I've slowly developed this relationship with oncology and I've seen a lot of cancer patients yeah. and it's kind of near and dear to my heart because of I've experienced it within the family. Um, those are some of the reasons, and also obviously because I like the research aspect of it. Those are some of the reasons why it appeals to me, and it's definitely a specialty that I will strongly consider. But having said that, you don't know until you know. Yeah. So, and there are plenty of opportunities for me to learn about lots of other cool things yeah, and definitely. maybe change my mind then. You will be a surgeon <laughs> by the end of it. Yeah, I know. Could you but imagine? You never know, do you? People go in like, like I want to do surgery now. I may end up as a pediatrician or a pathologist. Everyone I ask, exactly. people say you'd make a great pathologist or a radiologist <laughs> or someone who doesn't what actually talk saying? to people. <laughs> yeah. So that I think is where we'll wrap up this video, so it doesn't go on forever. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for, for having me on your Showing channel. me around. I do these very fleeting visits to London, so I never actually see. Any yeah, of it. I know. We had a good walk around, actually. You don't need to include this in the video, but I feel like it's important for me to say fifteen thousand six hundred and fifty-six steps. Yes, I would offer to show you around Coventry, although <laughs> that's not something. I would like to see Coventry. No, you would. <laughs> no one was. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. As I say, we did an interview for Atusa's channel. Mm -hmm where this is the other way around. It's me kind of rambling on about gratitude <laughs> medicine. I would think we'll probably be doing stuff together in the future. Yes, um, since I move into Birmingham. So leave us recommendations yeah. that you would like to see and we can start working. We'll on. make them happen. Let's make them happen. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for having me on your channel. Okay, bye. Bye.